All right, gang, we are on our way to Wachovia, and uh, this is such a colossal freaking waste of my time, and it pisses me off so much to have to deal with uh, office management snafus like this, but, you know, they happen. Um, I'd much rather be at the park or out on the beach or on the boat or having fun, so I figured I might as well try and salvage this a little bit. And I'm actually in my in my truck right now, driving to the bank and listening to a uh, the the latest edited version of uh, one of the modules for the how to double the the small law firm revenue doubler system. And I'm actually just at a part right now where we talk about uh, finances and money as it relates to law firms. So I figured that I might as well share a, a little minute or two of that with you. So I'm just going to turn on the radio, the CDs in the CD player, and um, try to salvage this uh, this trip to the bank. So it's not such a complete waste of my time. Get some value out of it. Here we go. Talk money, sign a fee contract, teach your clients how to keep a legal file. Was anyone else here ever afflicted with what law school did to me? And that was devalue my perception of my time. They will suffer from that. I see some heads nodding. No one wants to raise their hand. Well, think about it. You go through four, or in my case, five years of college. You go through three, or in my case, two and a half years of law school, paying for the privilege of doing work for someone else. Subconsciously, that teaches you that your time is worthless. Do the exercise that Judy taught you about when you get back to your office. Take your monthly expenses, multiply them by 12 to come up with your annual expenses. Divide that by the number of weeks you want to work to come up with your weekly overhead. Divide that by the number of hours you want to work to come up with your hourly overhead. And you're going to find that for most sole practitioners, you're somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 15 to $20 an hour is what it costs you to work for someone. I call it your pro bono rate. What's the definition of a pro bono client? Someone who doesn't pay? No, that's not the definition of a pro bono client. That's the definition of a bad account receivable. The de my definition of a pro bono client, and, and I hope you all appreciate that this is not exactly in sync with bar rules, so no one go out here tattling, but my definition of a pro bono client is an A-plus client who's willing to spend, I mean, who's worth spending, an A-plus client who is worth spending five, ten, fifteen dollars an hour for the privilege of helping. Because it's going to cost you five or ten or fifteen dollars to help this person, whether you get paid or not. And if they're not going to be an A client, why would you want to take money out of your pocket to spend to help them? You better take five dollars out of your pocket and say, here's five bucks, leave me alone. One of the exercises that we do when we talk with attorneys and we come up with these numbers is we have them pick whatever that number is, $5, $10, $11, $0.83, whatever it is, and I have them put it on their wall somewhere where they can see it. So the next time they have someone who they're thinking, maybe this person will pay me or maybe this person won't pay me, or but you know what, I'd rather do the work because i got nothing else to do anyway. And they can see, this is going to cost me $5 an hour for the privilege of helping this person. Do I, do I, would I rather spend $5 an hour to help this person or go home and spend time with my family? Or, oh, here's an idea, go out and market. Yeah, so that's just a little relevant, uh, something I thought was relevant. This trip to the bank is going to cost me, probably by the time I'm done, this is about a $1,000 trip to the bank in terms of the time that it's going to take me to drive here, deal with them, and get back. Um, you know, maybe I'll stop for lunch and, and try to have a good time. But... Um, you know, all of these little law firm management snafus that happen, and look, they happen. So we plan and we budget accordingly. We plan for things like this. If you plan for perfection, you'll be disappointed. So we plan for real for reality. Um, I don't know how well that recording is going to come through on the audio, but the point is be cognizant, remain cognizant of how much it costs you for all these little law firm management snafus like this. And that's why you build systems and procedures. But anyway, back to the point. We're here at the Wachovia Bank. Um, I made a deposit last week. I reconciled my account, and there was money missing. 
Um, so I have been on hold and got bounced around, so I decided, you know what, screw it, I'm going to come to the bank and deal with it. So let's see how it goes, all right? I'll, uh, I'll try to bring you along with me as much as you can. All right, we'll go inside. I'm gonna turn the camera off. <laughs> 